Hi everyone, welcome to Stars and Pearls. I'm so happy that you found your way here. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, comment, and share um, this, this video and help me grow this channel. So today I just wanted to do a quick video. It's not gonna be too long, too intense, too any of that, but it's going to be a quick look at demonic possessions. I mean, it's coming right on time here. 29th of October is when I'm doing this video and we're just shy of Halloween, shy of Day of the Dead here in where I live. And um, I wanted to dive into that because that was one of the articles that I brought up in the last What's the News? And I said I was going to go deeper into it. So this is going deeper into it. So let's have a look at the article that I was speaking of that I meant. And for that, I'm just going to switch to share screen. And one second, one second here. Got it. Okay, so you can see here, uh, we'll just briefly go through these things. And um, we've got here exclusive New York PD cop turned demonologist, and he's not the only New York PD cop. Okay, he's not the only cop that has turned. Actually, there's another one that we're going to be looking at in just a second who um, actually Eric Bana started, or Bana started in a movie about him. And um, we'll, we'll see that one a couple of years ago. So this one says, New York PD cop turned demonologist describes harrowing moments he drove out man's demon that tried to kill him in haunted main home after he bought antique dresser with old tarot cards inside. Chris DeFlorio and his wife Harmony DeFlorio traveled to Maine to remove a demonic spirit from a man who believed he was possessed by an evil spirit. The man, a divorced cardiolo cardiologist who lived alone in the country style farmhouse, surrounded by woods, believes his home was haunted and occupied by a demon. So <clears throat> we're moving up into the educated ranks. Remember when possession was also like something eye rolling, you know, like people would roll their eyes the same way they roll their eyes with UFOs. And now though, everything's coming out that it's, it's absolutely real, right? So um, a friend of the man who witnessed some of the poltergeist activity was the person who contacted Chris and Harmony for help. The Long Island-based demonologist, a 19-year veteran with the NYPD, said he got so busy helping people with demonic activity, he retired a year early. The duo helps families free of charge with spiritual issues ranging from a house being haunted to possession of a person. So the article goes on to describe that he was caught for 19 years. That's 20 years that he was working and 20 years that he was in a perfectly rational, if you will, position, showing up for work, dealing with his colleagues. And then he went into retirement because early retirement, because he got so busy becoming a de demonologist. So the homeowner had previously bought an antique dresser, which had used tarot cards inside. Um, he then hired a spiritualist to burn the cards in his fireplace, which DeFlorio believes caused the demon to attach itself to the Victorian home. Mm. <laughs> That's not how we do it. <laughs> Along with his wife, Harmony DeFlorio, Chris travels across the country helping families free of charge with spiritual issues ranging from their house being haunted to a demonic possession of a person. Their grateful clients have described the hero as duo as hero heroic first responders who try to save haunted people living in debilitating fear. He goes, I don't go to haunted buildings looking for adventure or to speak to some spirit. I rid the spirit from the lives of the victims and bring them peace through God, which is different from what is seen on television. Then there's a little clip and a video. This is him and his wife. And um, this is the house that was haunted. And this is the uh, antique dresser that he had bought with the tarot cards inside. The man believed, so one of his most terrifying cases happened in Portland, Maine, when Chris and Harmony traveled to a home where a cardiologist lived. The man believed he was possessed and that the country-style farmhouse he owned was cursed. The grand home sat on a parcel of 10 acres of land complete with in-ground pool, tennis courts, and woods all around with no safe neighbors in sight. Okay. Oh, that's his garage. I'm like, wait a minute. There was a neighbor. <laughs> that was the garage. Okay. <laughs> um, according to Chris, this evil force had tried to physically hurt the man several times trying to push him down a flight of stairs in which he suffered a bad injury to his hamstring he tried to run him off the road when he was driving and 
Sam Deuce, Sean Deuce, sorry, 43, a communication American childhood friend of the owner, told DailyMail.com that he went to visit his friend for a weekend getaway and was terrified when he experienced the haunting firsthand. He said poltergeist activity, security system went on and off, objects were flying. Um, his friends was embarrassed was by, was by, was embarrassed by this. It was something he wouldn't talk about. He didn't want anyone to think he was crazy. Um, he added, you know, when somebody is embellishing a story, well, this is real. He just wrote it off like there was something in his house that was trying to kill him. And um, this is where the tarot cards had been burned. This is where he was pushed down the flight of stairs. Um, he says, I don't know if it was a devil, but it was some spirit. I saw my friend's personality change that made him want to drive us off the road. This is key. I saw my friend's personality change that made him want to drive us off the road. And this is one of the main things that I want to talk about when it comes to demonic possession, negative spirits, stuff like that. Like it's not always like some outer force coming at you. It's it's literally a hijack of the mind and that you have to um, learn. You don't have to do anything. So <laughs> I have to be mindful of how I express things sometimes, but we have to learn that there's streams of consciousness that we tap into and that work through us. So everything that you think is you, part of it is you, but a big part of it is, is not usual. So um, it, it he tells the entire story, which is really um, worth reading through, but I want to switch to the other NYPD cop, which came out, who came out in uh, this article, sorry, came out in 2014, and his name is Ralph Sarchi. So this is the one who the movie was made about, and he says, evil isn't trying to steal your property, it's trying to steal your soul. NYPD cop turned demonologist on why he believes demonic possessions are on the rise, and yes, they are definitely on the rise, and um, we'll look at some, some lesser or one lesser known, you know, possibility. An 18-year veteran of the NYPD whose encounters with the supernatural are the basis of a new horror film says he believes incidences of demonic possession are on the rise. As a police sergeant in the South Bronx precinct, and remember this article is from 2014, yeah? So um, Ralph Sarchi encountered evil in his daily life, investigating horrific crimes that he put down to human nature until he began fighting against the terrifying supernatural forces. The film Deliver Us from Evil, which hits theater July 2nd, is based on Sarchi's experiences investigating demonic, demonic possession, which he documented in the 2001 book Beware the Night, and stars Eric Bana as Sarchi. So he goes on to speak about it, that as society pushes God out, and no one can deny that's happening, there's a good portion of society that just cannot stomach Jesus Christ or Christ consciousness or whatever, but the benevolent forces of the universe. And when I see that, I have to wonder where that hatred comes from. Um, he's quick to point out that he's not about to hold a seance or commune with the dead. I'm not a ghost hunter. I'm not a paranormal investigator. I'm a demonologist, he says in a short film posted to YouTube. And he says he was raised a Catholic. His faith, faith waned as he grew up, but it's now fully restored. I'm a religious demonologist. I approach this from a religious point of view. I'm not looking to entertain you. I'm looking to help you. And um, so he he speaks then about his, you know, and there are tons of clips from the mo uh, movie and stuff like that. So evil, he says, isn't trying to steal your property. It's trying to steal your very essence, your soul. Whoo, dark times, people. So this comment I found really interesting was that modern science finally acknowledges that we live in a universe of multiple dimensions, something the scriptures have been saying for several thousand years. Do the deniers really believe those extra dimensions are uninhabited? And I want to add, just sitting there waiting for us to exploit, as um, Majority Rose likes to say, we need to go into those other dimensions and exploit exploit our possibilities there. I'm like, we're not done exploiting the earth yet. Yet we want to go to other dimensions, which we believe are just there for us and exploit those. Like the the the, the extent of human hubris is is incredible. Incredible. So things are not really supernatural. They are super material. The angels and demons of God, they're simply residents of the further dimensions. They are able to manipulate our physical dimensions, just like we are able to manipulate our dimensions. So interesting comments, interesting to think about, interesting point of view. This is an additional 
uh, article here, I'm going to head to head with the devil meet New York PD cop. This is again about the same Ralph Sarchi who took part in 20 exorcisms and whose experiences as a demon hunter inspired new horror film. Wah. So um, you can see here the film that he is Deliver Us from Your Evil starring Eric Bana, Edgar Ramirez. I have not seen it yet. Um, after this, I'm definitely going to have a look at it. Let me check back in with the comments here. Stop share. Um, I don't want to lose you guys too much. <laughs> Hi, Rizzy. Hi, Joyce Day. Hi, Laura. And um, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, you guys. And share, share, share. And like, like, like. And comment, comment, comment. <laughs> So let's dive in further because um, I too have received messages that demonic activity is on the rise and um, it goes even further than, than what we were just speaking of. Um, let me see here, share screen, this one, that's the one I want back to there, yes. Okay, so now the new thing that's coming up is it says here, uh, and this is national addiction news. So obviously this is not, the news okay but it links to a news article which i'm absolutely true which i'm going to bring up in a second so covid jabs oh oh god please <laughs> so c jabs linked to surge in demonic possessions religious leaders say there are now many so many fully um that took the cookie that got the <laughs> donut whatever um people showing strong signs of demonic possession that a new saint michael center for spiritual liberation and exorcism is opening up in manila philippines according to reports the new site will be dedicated to performing exorcisms on people who got the cookie <laughs> Um, Father Joe Francis, Jose Francisco Sequia says he receives about 10 reports every single day of demons infesting the bodies of those that ate the cookie. The Roman Catholic Church is responsible for erecting this facility, which is interesting because if they're sending the money, honey, then they're acknowledging something, right? Which is reportedly the first of its kind in Asia. Priests will be trained in the art of expelling demons and Sigria, the director of the archdiocese, will hold the position of cheese exorcist. The official story is that the wave and all of its stressors are responsible for the uptick in demonic possession, but the reality is that the cookies are also a major contributor, okay? So let's have a look at that. Let me close these as I move through. I'm just going to, I'll link, of course, all the links that I, um, was was uh, opening up be, uh, underneath. So here we have the same, exactly the same article on a different website. And um, here's an old Daily Mail article. C is blamed for, the cookies are blamed for surge in demonic possessions as Catholic Church open center dedicated to exorcisms in the Philippines. And I found the same article with a slightly different headline, right? So this is why it's uh, here on archive today. But um, they changed the headline, but it's the same article over here. Or no, they didn't change the headline. What the hell? Okay, sorry about that, you guys. They didn't change the headline. It's still on Daily Mail. And um, the Catholic Church is building a center dedicated to exorcisms in the Philippines. And this is from 13th of June, 2022. So it's recent. Um, after an apparent surge since the wave. Okay, the St. Michael Center for Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism in Manila will be the first of its kind in Asia and will train priests in the art of expelling demons and provide a dedicated site to perform the rituals. Father Jose Francisco Siquia, director of the Archdiocese and chief exorcist, said he receives around 10 reports a day of spiritual disturbances. The church said that mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical stress caused by the wave made for a perfect storm for possessions and demonic intervention, okay? So if this whole thing was planned, right? If, was that the intention? Was that the intention? They knew that they needed to weaken us as a whole collectively to open the portal. So we need to like, I love, love, love that series, um, Supernatural, because it did show a lot of truths mixed in with a lot of story and fantasy, of course, 
But we have to remember that we are the portals, right? The portals is the human mind. Our hearts and our mind are the portals for energies, frequencies, consciousness streams to come through and manifest into this, this dimension, this reality here, right? So it's not some kind of hole in the ground and they all come up and it has they come through us. And for that, um, there have to be weaknesses in the barriers, in the in the walls that are erected within our psyche, within our consciousness, if you will, that allows these energies to stay at bay. Now, why do they need all these energies, these kind of energies here right now? Not quite sure, but we'll we'll dive into that. Let me get back to the comments. Stop share. <laughs> and um, let's see where you guys are at in the comments here. Hi, Laura. Yes, it totally reminds me of um Constantine movies. Susan E, when I close my eyes to go to sleep, I see wolves and scary faces, and I have to replace them with cute bunnies. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I had an um experience where I was uh, kind of sort of meditating. I was just kind of drifting and I saw the stars above me. I felt the expansion of the universe and all of a sudden everything felt tight, locked and everything went black. I was in this black box and I could see these um, faces, I would say gray faces just hanging in front of me. And I had to like throw them out, literally throw them out. And um, then I could go back, but it took it took a couple of days for me to be able to see the stars and feel the expansion again. It was it was really an interesting experience, but it was one of those that showed me that they're gaining more and more power and more and more access to our realms. So let's see here. Um, let's go back to the news and uh, what I want to share with you. And let me just uh, separate. Let's do this. Okay, so share screen again. Righty, so here we have on the Archdiocese of San Antonio, which I, I think is in Texas. I think this, this one comes from a Texan um, Catholic website. I'm pretty sure it's Texas, but you can check it out. This is from October 28th, 2022, which is yesterday. So interesting that I'm getting the, the hint by spirit to do this video that this is on the rise. And simultaneously, right, they're writing articles that this is on the rise. So this is literally from yesterday. And the video I did that I want to do um, about this is, is from a couple of days ago. So it says here, demonic possession in the U.S. on the rise. And it's a repost of October 11th, 2017. So um, there is an alarming increase in demonic activity being reported by those who work in exorcism ministry, said the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Although steps are being taken to increase the number of exorcists, demon, 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 demand is still outpacing supply. Father Vincent Lampert has been an exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis since 2005 and is the pastor at St. Malachy's in Indianapolis. He trained at the North American College in Rome and assisted with more than 40 exorcisms with the longtime Italian exorcist Father Carmine de Filippi. Although the identities of most exorcists are hidden, Father Lambert often gives talks to warn against evil and turn people towards the power of God. And um, as you guys know, that is what I see is the power of my, the, the direction of my work as well is to, to help you reconnect with your true source in a non, um, I don't want to attach it to religion as much as your true source within yourself and that you reconnect with that, find the power within that, whatever you want to call it, whatever name you give it, doesn't matter, but the energy is real and it's there and it's it's working through you as well, right? So um, he goes on to explain all of that. And then the next article I wanted to show was Catholic Online. And it says here, in the bright and cheery world of Christianity light, <laughs> many forget that Satan is real and that his tactics are ancient and tested. While many souls fall to the wayside because of secular influences, the number of people reporting possible demonic possessions to the church is increasing, right? So then we move on. What are the signs of demonic possession? And 
one of the signs of demonic possession is pretty clear and we see it in all the movies and everything is an irrational aversion uncontrollable aversion to sacred things and places these would include classes bibles churches hymns and prayer the responses to these things are a mixture of intense hatred and abject fear so this goes beyond okay to clarify just a simple not liking or not being in agreement with or not um you know all of those feelings that people have when you just have a different opinion to something. And this is not about that. This is literally, and I've seen it, is um, uh, uh, it, for the people experiencing this, it is like the gates of hell open up. They are so afraid and averse. It's something irrational. It's like an irrational um, compulsion to move away from these things. It's something they can't control. It comes from somewhere deep within and not just from an opinion or an idea or a different, you know, take on things. Right. And, um, so this is, this is really interesting because I'll show you this here. This popped up today. Yeah. 29th of October, 2022. And it's a shocking moment. Woke Wisconsin students shred and eat Christian protesters Bible outside screening of Matt Walsh's um, TG documentary, What is a Woman? So the screening attracted dozens of protesters who shouted about trans rights, racism, and Nazis. As one counter protester read passages from his Bible, students grabbed the book, ripped its pages out, and one even began to eat the scripture. So this is a little excessive, you know, <laughs> just mildly. So I'm wondering what happened here, you know, what happened here, but um, a huge thing about evil consciousness streams is that it doesn't just affect the individual, right? It's actually way more powerful in groups and masses because the mass consciousness is a lot lower than the individual consciousness. And you can read about that in a lot of books that have been written about mass psychosis, mass consciousness, mass marketing, um, all of that. You can start off with Gustave Le Bon, who probably wrote the marketing bible um back in 1892 or 19 early 1900s somewhere around there and he speaks about the the consciousness of the the crowd and how that um goes it, it's a very low level consciousness that is easy to hijack and manipulate and he writes exactly how to do it so if he knows that and we know that then these energies definitely know that and this is something stuff like this is to keep an eye on because it's completely irrational this is absolutely irrational compulsive behavior which is which is a kind of a a arrow or a direction where is this energy coming from where is this intention coming from where are these ideas coming from right so the catholic church is um that's the one i just told you, uh, is opening an exorcism center in Manila. This is also on MSN, Catholic Church Building Exorcism. This is from 13th of June, after surge in possessions. Um, Vatican tells, this is from LGBTQ Nation, but it's information. So um, the Vatican has told a group of exorcists that they shouldn't try to cast out cookies from worshipers. The course on exorcism and prayer of liberation conference held at a Vatican-owned pontifical university gathers the world's exorcists, and after being canceled last year due to the pandemic, the attendees had plenty to discuss. Overwhelmingly, we were asked to exercise cookies from people who were sick. Father Miguel Martin, a Spanish exorcist who was attending the con uh, conference, told the Daily Beast. We were told under no circumstance should we perform the right on a cookie patient. Organizers say the pandemic then has them in bigger demand than ever before too. So he goes on to, to speak about um, how Jesus performed exorcisms and from the, to him the church has received the power and office of exercising. Uh, the church employs hundreds of priests trained. In. So you can go back and forth on this if you believe in this, don't believe in this, right? And how the Catholic church operates. But they have a feeler out, they have an eye out and their focus, they have a focus out on what is happening in this arena. So if they're reporting, oh my God, like there's been a strong uptick in, in um, what we're doing or what we need to do, then maybe we should have a look at it. it. It doesn't matter if we agree with them, generally speaking, on their religion or not. So um, just have a look, you know, play with the ideas that are not yours you can put them back, sign of intelligence. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's, it's everywhere, right? So here on the Daily Beast, they speak about that. Um, this is from 2021. 
the wave was hard on almost everyone with lockdowns and other restrictions, but it appears to have been particularly trying for the demonically possessed. The world's Catholic exorcists were unable to carry out their work in person, creating what was essentially a devil's playground for those who believe. So the wave has caused all kinds of problems and opened up the portal too, right? And here on Star Tribune, exorcisms make a 21st century comeback in Minnesota, US. So I'll post all this um, in the description box below this video, but let's have a look now with the cards of what's going on. Um, So what do my cards say about this? And is this really something to be afraid of? Is this really something to fear? Is this, or to be um, wary of, or to pay attention to? And is it what we think it is? That's what I wanna know. Is it what we think it is? Because so many times where we're looking at things and we're, um, afraid of things but it's actually something else so let me let me see here what is this uptick in demonic possessions okay so the card that popped out is the rising, which is definitely showing an uprising, an uptick, something growing, something rising up. It's also another card that popped up is smoke signals. So there's some kind of a distraction happening with this upticking, okay? So yes, there's an uptick in some kind of activity, but simultaneously, it's it's almost not to be taken too seriously because it's distracting from something else. Um, the third card that popped up is sensitive, right? So it's it's definitely targeting um, what is coming up here. a sensitive topic no it has to be dealt with sensitively okay let me switch to the angel tarot um, is this even right now the card that flipped out is the god of hope sitaya and the three of wands Construction of the universe, help with great works, protection from adversaries. So this is super interesting. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. King of Swords, um, victory, grants victory and protection from lightning. Laoya. Hahael, mission, protects against slander and impious people, the God of Trinity. And Queen of Cups, redemption serves against enemies. Okay, so what I'm getting out of this is that this, this is happening. This is happening. And that it's distracting, though, looking at the negative aspect of it and the fear side of it. It's distracting from the positive use that can be made of these situations. And the positive use that can be made of these situations is the renewal of hope, the renewal of faith, the renewal of a positive outlook, the renewal of a connection to a higher spirit, to believing that something larger than us, the exalted God in a sense, is in control of the situation. Um, it feels like this is, a, a, if you will, a sensitive way of going about renewing a faith in the divine. It's a, a way of restoring order right so these demonic energies that are coming in that are rotating around that are causing wreaking havoc they are in uh, 
I have to be really careful, <laughs> but I'm just going to say it as it's coming. But everything that is given to the Holy Spirit can be used for good, it says in A Course in Miracles. So these energies are coming in, in a way to restore order to the cosmos, restore order to the universe. It's almost like God uses the forces of chaos to restore order in a, on a higher level in a sense, right? So I feel like we've gotten to, because also what came up was pinky brain. So we've gotten to a point in our culture, in our society, and on this planet, on this earth, where it's almost like we feel responsible for the order of the universe. We think the order has is, is connected to us in some way, shape, or form. And these happenings are meant to show um, that there is a higher order. There is something that creates order, installs order, restores order, um, that is, it is their order and not our order. Now, it's interesting, as I'm saying this, that this is all coming in during a time where there are lots of issues on the planet that we believe we control, right? And that something else is coming in and showing up and saying, you're not in control, right? And it doesn't mean that we don't have to clean up our act, but it also means that we have to acknowledge and be aware that there is still a cosmic mystery happening, if you will. There's still something that is of a higher order, right? And it says here, Knight of Cups, this is another card that flipped out, and this is Ariel, and it says here, perception and revelation discovers hidden treasure, reveals secrets of nature, the revealing God, right? So these entities are actually being used to, and as I'm saying that, I see them in chains, they're in chains, they're, they're enchained, and um they're being used in the service of God to reveal God's order, God being used loosely. So whatever that source is, whatever that energy is, whatever works for you, but this higher benevolent energy of the universe. So there's nothing to be afraid of in that sense. And um, because fear is actually showing a lack of faith in the divine order. Okay. Um, I think I'll leave it at that, but I do want you guys to keep an eye out for stuff that is happening and post in the comments below and let me know what you think this is. If this is a um, mixing of dimensions, right? Because sometimes we walk into houses and it's a multiple dimensions that are open, right? So it's not specifically a haunting in that sense. It's, it's another dimensional level. Or if you, what you think this whole thing is, or if you've noticed an uptick, in um, demonic possessions, if you've noticed an uptick in negative occurrences around you. And especially at this time of year, what I find interesting is that almost worldwide, this time of year is, is sacred when it comes to topics around death, um, ancestors, um, the other side. Like, um, it's, it's here in Mexico where I'm at, it's day of the dead time. So this entire week is day of the dead week and it culminates on November 1st and um, each day they celebrate a different grouping so we had pets uh, yesterday or the day before then there's a children's day and so on and so forth so the highlight is November 1st and that is um, All Saints Day in, in Europe right all Hallows Eve as well 31st of October Halloween so what is this date write down what you think or what you feel I'd love to hear from you and love to hear um, your thoughts and ideas as well okay I have things to run this is why I'm keeping this short today I have to run and um, but I will be back and Maybe I'll do a further deep dive in, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes up. Okay. Have an awesome day. And if you would like a check-in into your situation, of course, as always, whether that be soul retrievals, healing sessions, your house clearing, um, some couching, coaching, counseling, check the description box below this video. You'll find my information. I'm more than happy to connect with you and help you find a solution to whatever it is that you're going through. Take care. Bye. <laughs>